But enough talk. Let's go drink a milkshake, shall we? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Bill Hader impressions. And you know something, Mr. Cohen? I've never even heard of you! <laughs> Your mother has. <laughs> you don't sass me with your liar mouth. I never knew there were two Lindsay Buckinghams. How did this happen? Should have let him talk, man. He would have told you. Makes zero different. <laughs> it's like, I mean, no one cares. For this list, we're going over the greatest impressions of celebrities and other famous figures by actor Bill Hader. To be clear, we won't be including any original characters by Hader, such as Stefan. Those have a list of their own. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, Stefan. Connor, Percy, it's nice to be here. If there's a Hater impression you're especially impressed with, let us know in the comments. Number 20, Lorne Michaels. The creator and longtime producer of Saturday Night Live, as well as Bill Hader's boss for many years, Lorne Michaels is known in many circles of the entertainment industry. He's also frequently the subject of imitation by those who've worked for him. Lauren Michaels tried to help me after season four. He went, you know, you can work here as long as you want. Hader does perhaps the best impression of the man. While being interviewed on Conan, Hader recounted an occasion when Lauren spent a whole plane trip speaking to him nonstop as he drifted in and out of sleep. You wake up and it's like, and Ray Charles said they all owe me money. <laughs> you wake up and he's like, and that's how you grow blueberries in May. Hater also does a great bit where he imitates Michael's habit of name dropping the cavalcade of celebrities he knows. But instead of celebrities, he name drops famous serial killers. I went to Kansas City um, with Alec and Marcy uh, to try to get <laughs> BTK killer off death row. <laughs> Number 19, Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson is one of the most famous actors out there, and his very particular acting style and mannerisms make him the perfect subject for imitation. As a guest on Ellen, Bill Hader does a spot-on rendition of the actor. You're gonna order a lemonade for me, <laughs> little child. Given the prompt of Nicholson running a lemonade stand, Hader proceeds to mimic his squint and sinister grin, and he absolutely nails the voice as he threatens a young customer should they fail to buy from him. And if you don't order a lemonade for me, you're gonna go right to hell. <laughs> Slap a pair of sunglasses on him, age him up a bit, and you would swear he was Nicholson himself. Number 18, Seth Rogen. Bill Hader and Seth Rogen have worked together on more than a few occasions, most famously in the 2007 comedy Superbad. Naturally, working around Rogan has allowed Hater to pick up on his voice and mannerisms. Hater has recounted several anecdotes about Rogan, including their time on Superbad and times they've smoked pot together. Seth Rogan said he's like, smoking pot with you is like smoking pot with my dad. Because <laughs> I'm just like, well, we're smoking grass. <laughs> We're smoking grass, guys. We're smoking dope. He'll usually throw in a quick impression of Rogan somewhere in these stories, but his imitation of him on Ellen takes the cake. In this one, Hater stays consistent with the Amsterdam incident and imagines Rogan reading his own on-brand version of Puff the Magic Dragon. Puff the Magic Dragon uh, huffed and puffed and then kept puffing and puffed some more and then he, like, got some Oreos with his friends. <laughs> Number 17, Star Wars Creatures. Bill Hader loves Star Wars. Who doesn't? While he did make it into the franchise itself, brownie points if you know who he played, he'd honed his vocalizations for years beforehand. And it certainly paid off. His best impressions from the franchise are of non-human creatures. Firstly, he does a great Jabba the Hutt. I can do Jabba the Hutt dying. <laughs> you can do Jabba the Hutt dying? Yeah. Can we hear it? <laughs> He's previously done his impression of the slug-like gangster on Conan, and has also busted it out in the movie It Chapter 2 as part of an extended Your Mom joke. She, she'll put her arm around me, and she'll whisper to me, she'll go, <laughs> But perhaps his most bizarre impression overall is that of a dying Tauntaun. These domesticated Hoth animals may smell bad inside and out, but Hater's impression is positively rosy. Uh, Falcon, Falcon, and then dying Tauntaun. Uh. <laughs> okay, Number 16, Barack Obama. Fans of SNL know of Fred Armisen's famous impression of Barack Obama. 
However, there are probably fewer people who know that Bill Hader's imitation of the former U.S. president is scarily good. While doing an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Armisen and Hader recount how, while on set, the two of them would do a bit that involved emulating Obama. I went down to, I went down to Venice Beach, <laughs> where in the 60s a band taught us that if we work hard, we can break on through to the other side. Hader perfectly replicates the cadence of Obama's voice, and hearing his version of the politician in the bizarre scenarios the two comedians cooked up is a lot of fun. Take Obama giving a speech about his time in Los Angeles or working on the set of Two Broke Girls, for example. So you go, and then you go, and you two are on a date, and you talk, talk. <laughs> but you can't talk because then they have to pay you more, so you have to pretend like you're talking. There are few things more glorious than this. Number 15, Henry Winkler. A veteran television actor, Henry Winkler may have gotten his start as Fonzie on Happy Days, but he's pretty much the opposite of the over-the-top macho character in real life. He also stars alongside Bill Hader on the show Barry. I'm trying not to overwhelm you, Barry. I'm trying to give you the view from 10,000 feet before we dive in and break it down scene by scene. Given how closely they work together, Hader has managed to capture the essence of Winkler quite well. He's recounted Winkler's continued shock of the dark content of Barry on various talk shows, and has managed to imitate his co-star's soft-spoken, good-natured surprise perfectly. Incidentally, Hader's impression of Winkler's impression of John Travolta's hand acting is also fantastic. Is that meta enough for you? John Travolta in that, he always uses his hands. His hands are just so, it's like they're only made to handle uh, teacups, like little teacups. <laughs> Number 14, Jim Jordan. In this cold open SNL sketch, Bill Hader plays Jim Jordan, an Ohio congressman involved in questioning Donald Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, who was played by guest star Ben Stiller. Mr. Chairman, good afternoon to you, you oh. lying piece of human trash! Hader plays up Jordan's anger and increasing exasperation wonderfully. Although Jordan doesn't have as distinct a voice as some of the other impressions on this list, Hader more than makes up for it with his body language and overall enthusiasm in the role. I'm so angry I couldn't even wear a jacket today! It says a lot about his skills that he manages to steal the scene away from Ben Stiller's dead-on Cohen impression. Number 13, James Mason. While many today probably aren't familiar with him, James Mason was a huge star in the mid-20th century. The British actor had a very distinguished and suave voice. With such expert play acting, you make this very room a theater. Bill Hader reportedly did an impression of him during his Saturday Night Live audition, which he has recounted on several talk shows. In the bit, Mason's trying to buy a dozen donuts with an expired gift certificate. He's like, I would like to buy a dozen donuts with this gift certificate. <laughs> and I'd also like your biggest bottle of you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I see. Hater's impression work is always so fun because of these weird scenarios he puts the celebrities in. We hope that Mason was able to get the bottle of Yoohoo at least. Number 12, John Malkovich. Impressions of John Malkovich are pretty rare. The actor is so singular that it seems impossible to imitate him. Yet somehow, Bill Hader not only manages it, but does so spectacularly. Hader has actually done the impression to Malkovich's face while interviewing the actor in an SNL Vinny Vidici sketch. Hello, my name is John Malkovich. <laughs> I don't sound anything like that. No, no, you sound exactly like this. Can you imagine the guts that takes? He's also busted out his Malko as a guest on Weekend Update. Regardless of the circumstance, Hader captures the very particular way that Malkovich emphasizes certain words, as well as the intimidating aura he, or at least his most famous characters, exude. I might enjoy watching him slowly grow frustrated as they realize Olympic Games don't take breaks for t-shirt cannons. <laughs> Number 11, Anthony Scaramucci. Some say that Anthony Scaramucci was put on this earth just so Hader could impersonate him. And after seeing Hader's take on the mooch, it's hard to disagree. Yo! It's me, Anthony Scaramucci! The mooch! When watching Scaramucci in interviews, you get the impression that he kinda likes the sound of his own voice. And Hader grabs hold of this with both hands. And when I hear my name three times, I appear like a Goomba Beetlejuice. <laughs> Wow, well, uh, thanks for calling in, Mr. Scaramucci. 
So. Munch. <laughs> With a scrunched up face like he's just sucked on a lemon and constant imposing hand gestures, Hader channels all the foibles of the ex-White House Director of Communications. And you know what? Hader's hardly even exaggerating. I think we're good, bro. No, you're not good, bro. Come on. Everybody loves the mooch. Number 10, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Here's an impression that everyone likes to think they can do, but very few can actually pull off. Hater, however, has got the predator-crushing muscle man down to a T, from his trademark groaning to his cigar waving. And Arnold just hung, like, he just hang out, like, with, like, with no shirt on. Like, <laughs> in boxers, like, smoking a cigar, like, playing chess. <laughs> and, and bugs are coming around, they're like, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> Oh, and, of course, his schnitzel anecdotes. You know, this is where we show predator. And I was like, I am. Because I would have schnitzel flown in for the cast and crew. I go, I am. And Hader's done his research, too, famously acting as Arnie's personal assistant on the set of Collateral Damage. If his straight-up imitation of him wasn't enough to convince you of his Austrian prowess, then maybe his face-mapped reenactment on Jimmy Kimmel will be. Hi, Bill, remember me? It's me. <laughs> remember? <laughs> wow. Used to work for me. Oh, oh, that's scary. Number nine, Tom Cruise. To say this iconic actor is known for being a little over the top is a huge understatement. Just ask Oprah. What has happened to you? <laughs> During an interview on Letterman, Hader recounts how Cruz was trying to place him while filming on the set of Tropic Thunder. In true Tom Cruise fashion, Hader starts off slowly with some intense squinting and pointing, eventually escalating to loud, wide-eyed applause. And I did a Seth Rogen impression, and it was like I did a magic trick. Tom Cruise was like, yeah! <laughs> Which is to say, Hader's Cruise impression probably hovers somewhere between the office scene from Jerry Maguire and any of the intense stares from the Mission Impossible franchise. Speaking of which, we wonder if Hader can do the run. Number 8, Prince Philip. From realistic to ridiculous next, and a larger-than-life impression that's both inaccurate and offensive, but in all the right ways. Put on some nice perfume. Car heels. Yeah, maybe a negligee. Tassels and the like. Presenting the royal family as a gang of cockney thugs, Hater plays Prince Philip alongside Fred Armisen's Queen Elizabeth. I beg your pardon, Your Majesty, but why are you two talking like that? This is how we really talk, love. Not so nice, right? But it gets the job done, don't it? Who, at every chance, tried to intimidate newly initiated members Kate and Pippa Middleton. Whether it's his wildly inappropriate threats or his toothpick twirling mannerisms, Hater's Prince Philip is a classic case of a caricature being more entertaining than the real thing. Oh, your Majesty, your, your secretary briefed me on all the royal etiquette. I'm not talking about salad forks, love. This ain't the Princess Diaries. <laughs> Although, hey, for all we know, the real Phil could be a punk badass, too. My name's a queen, and this is not a democracy. Don is in a riot in the streets. Number seven, Vincent Price. Horror legend Vincent Price has always been a special kind of creepy. His roller coaster of a persona can go from a jovial grin to an eerie stare in the blink of an eye. <laughs> All Hallows Eve, when the minions of Sam Hain come back. Guys, I'm not fully up yet. You gotta keep pressing the, the thing. And Hater's over the top take on Price is all the right kinds of dramatic. Sure, he's got the slouched body language down, but it's the squeaky voice that really sells it. Well, that and the raven on his shoulder. Tonight, prepare yourself for a night of spooks and scares, as we have invited over some of our most famous friends for some tricks and also some treats. Not only is his impression spot on, but seeing Hater's Price trying to wrestle with inappropriate guests and keep his show family friendly, as well as spooky, is absolute gold. Let's wrap it up. You've just partaken in a celebration more foul. We're phantasms and race. You want a clear frame there? Just wanna... Wander the earthly plane in search of vengeance upon the living and... Guys, I thought we had this thing fixed. Number six, Daniel Day-Lewis. 
Daniel Day-Lewis is an actor who disappears into his roles, so any impression of him is bound to be specific, and Bill Hader's is no exception. In this SNL sketch, he parodies Day-Lewis's character Daniel Plainview from the film There Will Be Blood. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up! He literally acts out a famous metaphor from the film, drinking people's milkshakes. My straw goes across the room, and I drink your milkshake! I drink it up! There are a ton of quotes lifted straight from the movie, but Hater's imitation of Plainview is positively uncanny and hilarious throughout. Good day, old man. I'm going to drink your milkshake. No, you're not. Go get your own milkshake. It's every bit as delicious as those milkshakes. In fact, you might say we drink it up. Number five, Alan Alda. Yeah, uh, hey, what are you looking at, butthead? Hey, why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? <laughs> you know, that, that, that is a great line. That, I mean, that is so great. You know? The stuff you guys are doing with the 50s and everything. Out of all the impressions on this list, Hater's take on Alan Alda has got to be the most accurate vocal mimicry by far. Just close your eyes and you'd put money on the fact that it was Hawkeye Pierce for MASH himself. Hey, you're looking a lot better than the last time I saw you. How you feeling? In the pink. Uh, I wanted to leave you a note before I left. I just didn't have the time. I didn't even know you were gone. I thought you were in the bathroom. This is thanks to Hater's mastery of the thick Bronx accent and the way in which Alda would stammer, which became trademarks over the years. But it's not just the voice. Hater even nails Alda's renowned hand gestures and body language, which is, as he'd say, terrific. Just terrific. Son, your ego's writing checks your body can't cash. <laughs> oh, that, you know, that is a terrific line. I feel like I understand everything about this movie just from the one line. That's good writing, you know? I don't know <laughs> about airplanes. Number four, James Carville. Hi, Sam. Hey, how are you, James? Well, they ain't found the bodies yet, Seth, so I'm doing just fine. All right, yeah. <laughs> Our fourth entry is another politically charged impression, and one that makes haters take on Anthony Scaramucci look like child's play. Political commentator James Carville is known for his Louisiana accent, bald head, and, of course, his sometimes controversial views. Now, James, you know, while we have you here, we haven't had a chance to ask, what do you think of the Republican candidates? Oh, I think plenty about them. <laughs> and I laugh. I laugh. And Hater rolls all that into one in this spot-on performance that sees him spoofing the raging Cajun Democrat flawlessly. Okay, so maybe Hater focuses on the wild, frantic side of Carvel more than anything else, with alligator anecdotes coming out of his ears. One night, Newt and I go paddle boating on the Potomac River. Now, it doesn't matter why, but I'm friends with some alligators. <laughs> but picture Carvel on a whole bunch of caffeine, and boom, you've got bald Hater. Number three, Keith Morrison. You know an impression is good when it gets the seal of approval from the person themselves. We had just gotten married. Oh. You liked it, so you put a ring on it. Uh. And Hater got just that with Keith Morrison. His impression of the true crime presenter from the show Dateline has become legendary on SNL, with Hater delivering a pitch-perfect version of Morrison's seemingly morbid sense of intrigue. When I walked into the convenience store, I saw it was being held up. Oh, no. <laughs> One of the robbers pointed his gun right at me. Oh. And when the self-proclaimed Dateline fanatic came face to face with Morrison, it only further highlighted just how accurate his take on the TV personality is. He's the perfect, most he's the master. He's the master. He is the master. I don't know how you get better than Keith Morrison. I knew he was gonna be here. <laughs> I knew he was gonna be here. Anyone can make getting so into gruesome crime stories okay, then it's haters Morrison. No one tells a story like Dateline, or do they? That's so rad. <laughs> Number two, Al Pacino. There's a certain amount of anger, frustration, and high intensity that goes into an Al Pacino impression. And pulling it off without looking like you're trying too hard ain't easy. Unless you're Bill Hader, that is. Yeah, I was watching that and he was kind of like, just totally into like the peripheral and like weird things. So mm -hmm. he was like, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> We got some lights. 
a couple of cameras. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> From the way he drags out the ends of his sentences to his slow, methodical head movements, Hayter has perfected the enigmatic Pacino personality. Ah, uh, you get shot walking your doggy. You know it's good when you can tell he's in character even when he isn't saying anything. But we guess the biggest part of selling it is making even the most boring stories sound enthralling. Like spotting a cantaloupe in a kitchen. If I walk into this kitchen <laughs> and I see a cantaloupe <laughs> on that table, I will lose my mind. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Clint Eastwood Take every aspect of stereotypical Clint Eastwood impersonations, throw them together, and you get haters' take on the movie god that is Eastwood. This is commercial for again. All right, Chrysler. Get a Chrysler and get off my damn lawn. Let's see. Cold stare that could give you nightmares? Check. Gravelly, spiteful voice that induces fearful goosebumps? Check. I should know. I'm Batman. High trousers that almost touch his chin? Check. In these spoof SNL Chrysler ads, Hater not only sells the impression comically, he even sells it cinematically. This is an ad for Chrysler, right? Think again. It's for Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. Just look at him. From a distance, that glare could be Eastwood himself. All he needs now is a Smith & Wesson and a Gran Torino. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.